Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create a graph in Unity. We're going to dynamically modify the horizontal scale of our graph based on our list of values. Let's get started. So, we previously made the y-axis in here dynamically scale based on the values received. We set up the code to make it identify the highest value and increase a bit from there, identify the lowest and decrease a bit from there. Now we set up the code to support going under zero based on the lowest value, but in this case it looks better if we just start off at zero. So the code supports going under, but for now let's start off at zero. So there are many ways to scale our x axes depending on what we want. We can have, for example, a maximum amount and ignore the older values, or we can show them all regardless of how many we have and position them correctly within the width of our graph. Let's start off by making a maximum number of values visible. So here I am in my code, in my show graph function, and in here I'm going to create a variable for the maximum amount of values we can show. So in here let's make an int for the max visible value amount, which will be 5, let's say. So we only want to display the last 5 values. And down here when we're cycling through our value list array, we only want to show a certain amount of values. So instead of starting at zero, we're going to start at value list .count minus our max visible value amount. So if the max visible value amount is set to five, this will start displaying from value list minus five. So it will display the last five values. Now that we're no longer starting the index at zero, we can't use the index to calculate our X position. So let's make a variable to store our x index regardless of the actual index that we're checking on our list. So in here, let's make an x index and start it off at zero. And when we go through the end of our cycle, let's increase our x index. And here, instead of using i, we're going to use the x index. So regardless of what value i has, the x index will start from zero. So let's test it out and we should see only the last five values. Yep, there you go. Our graph is displaying the last five values. You can even see the days are correct, 11, 12, 13, the last five values. Okay, great. Now in here, the one issue that we can see is that our Y scaling is still being dependent on the entire value list. Since one of those values was at 98, we still go up to 117. But in the ones that we are showing here, they don't go up that high. So let's make sure that when we calculate our highest and lowest values, we are doing so only based on these values, the ones that are actually visible. So up here, instead of doing a for each through the whole list, let's do a for each only of the values that we want. Make an int value, which is the value list of i. Okay, so now everything should be working. Yep, there it is. Our bottom is at zero since we set that specifically and the highest point has a 20% buffer. Okay, great. So now one thing, let's go into our code and up here when I'm setting my list, let us send an actual different thing. Let me send just one value. So can you guess what will happen? Well, let's see. And there you have it. We have an error in our console argument out of range. So essentially we are trying to access a negative index. So down here, when we're going through the value list, we have to make sure that we never start off at a negative value. In order to do that, let's go into mathf.max and pick the highest value between this and zero. We're grabbing the highest value between these two. If we have less than five values, then this first argument in here will be negative and the function will return this zero. Otherwise, it will return the value in here. Let's apply the same thing down here. Okay, let's test again and it should display only one value. Yep, there you go. We are displaying just one value and there are no longer any errors. Now again, our scaling has an issue here since if we only have one value, then our code in here, when we're doing this difference, it will always be zero. So we're, we can't add 20% of zero because, well, that's zero. So one way to fix that, we can go up here and make a float for the Y difference, which will be Y maximum minus the Y minimum. And we're simply going to test if it is under a certain amount. So in here, if the Y difference, if it is less than zero, then let's just set it to a simple minimum. So let's say 5F. The value in here really depends on what values it will receive, but as long as it's a positive number, it will increase by a certain amount. So in here, instead of using that, we're going to use the difference. Okay, so let's test it again. And now the number should no longer be hugging the top. 
Yep, there you go. We got a nice little buffer in here. Okay. All right, so we now have the graph displaying a maximum amount of values. Let's write the code for displaying all values regardless of the size. So first of all, we want to have both behaviors available. So we're going to add a new parameter to our function to indicate how many values we want to show. So I'm going to grab the max visible value amount and add it as a parameter in here. So remove the local one and let's set the default to minus one. Now we're going to make sure this value is always valid. So in here, if it is less than or equal to zero, then let's just display the whole thing. So let's display the value list.count. Now in here, when I call, if I want to display the whole thing, let's send it a minus one. So I'm sending a minus one in here, which is under zero. So it will set this to the value list.count, which is all of the items. So we're going to use the previous value list, all of these, and we're going to send minus one. So we should be able to see all of these values. Yep, there you go. We can see all the values that we are sending to our graph. Now there's still an issue with our code. So back in here, let's add a bunch more values. So just random stuff in there. Now let's test. And as you can see, the values are leaving our graph. This is happening because we have set a fixed value to our X size. So the width of each of our nodes, we need to define our X size based on the max visible value amount. So back in here in my show graph, when I'm calculating the X size, it will no longer be a fixed value. Let's simply do our graph width divided by the max visible value amount. So up here, when I'm grabbing graph height, let's also grab the graph width, which is a size delta dot x. And in here, divide the graph width by the max visible value amount. So let's test it out. And okay, all of our values are currently being displayed in here. Now our last value in here is hugging the right side of the graph. Let's give it some distance. So in here on our X size calculations, let's just increase the max visible amount by one. And that should be enough to give us a little buffer on the right side. Yep, there you go. All of our values are being correctly displayed regardless of how many we have. So there you have it. We have successfully added horizontal scaling to our graph. In the next video, we're going to display it as a bar graph instead of a line graph. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.